Sports and what are your thoughts on overpass getting picked here, Vince? I mean, it is kind of curious, right? They've only played it once in the past, like three or four months. So, them picking into that map against Crazy is, I mean, it's a, it's a classic Carrigan pick, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, it definitely is scary. Uh, whichever way you spin it, that is, that is very scary indeed. And I think most people, and myself included, actually fancy this best of three to go the distance. I think it's very possible we're going to have all three maps here. It is, as we do see. Crazy have managed to get a kill though. Esperando with that deagle, making it sing out loud. He's gonna find Chris J, but it's still gotta find four more players as they are gathering up towards his A hit. Unfortunately for them, it is Mr. Frozen and uh, Carrigan waiting for them. That should be it. Should be a slaughter here. Ooh, nice, nice boost, nice run boost coming out from Auto. They're gonna make their way to the A side, but they should, should be it. Frozen's gonna have no trouble massacring everyone in the A bomb side. So round number two, going the way of mass boards. Yeah, that goose position always a terror when you don't have many oh, ridiculously good on it. Well, I mean, you do say, speaking of good aim, if you look at a crazy lineup, it is pretty mental. Okay, reasonable. Esperanto finds the kill onto Chris J through the smoke right after Hunter gets that opening pick. So that's a, that's a great double opening. The B-bomb side's going to face a lot of pressure, but you take his name, and it is going to be Walksick opening things that he finds one kill. Well, finally, Crazy has something to be happy about. Nearly the Rops with two. Outside of the doors, Cheek and Peak flashbang into the eyes of Esperanto, but still spins around in time to claim the frag. And Voxic, try as he may with the scout, is out. have to call at that point in time. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, people uh, haven't been around for as long. Remember, he used to be a primary AWPA, even in CSGO. Yep. He was a guy that could pick it up and do serious damage with it. So he definitely isn't one of those IGLs that offers nothing in terms of fragging. Voxic and Esperanto going to trade kills on Catwalk. That's going to draw out the smoke. A valuable little bit of utility. There's only three smokes remaining with the one flash. So no incendiaries, no HEs to play with. It's going to be so vitally important. But crazy, what can they do with this advantage? They do have Letney floating around to its upper tunnel. So I'm, I'm curious. They might they still have time to work. They have a lot of utility as well. They might just fake towards A and then go for Yeah, it should be a B hit here. Auto getting that kill on drops at mid means they have an opening but i say that they're still inching up towards short so i think they're going to try and fake something over here maybe maybe a smoke couple of flashbangs perhaps but while they wait over there chris j finds letney letney oh he should have just been a little bit more patient if he stuck around towards lower tunnels without showing himself they could have gone for the b hit but now he's been found out now they will be forced to go towards the a bomb server guess who's waiting it is going to be walks if he finds hunter looking for more next up it will be found by carrigan it's all on auto he finds one but this 1v2 it is doable vince it certainly is, and he knows what one of these other players are. He's seen where Voxic shot from earlier. He's trying to fake out the shot. Obviously, nice, but I'm not a big fan of this setup because the mid to be hit is coming in. This is such a, an odd off angle that you don't really anticipate from Crazy's perspective. And you can see he gets the free frag on Nexa, able to pull back with a flashbang out of there. Smoke has been deployed. Only 25 seconds now. For Crazy to make some moves, yes, they've got a kill onto Chris J, which is massive towards B, but how much damage can Rops do before he falls? None is the resounding answer. If he gets a kill or two, I mean, that round pretty much just falls away from Crazy. As it stands, though, they've weathered the storm, and they have a 4v3 advantage, and it's not really a site that you can hope to retake. I'm surprised that Carrigan is even still here. I guess it's an MP9, so one of the expendable weapons, but when you consider their finances are so low, the Kevlar, the utility. He disagrees. I just wanted to point out one quick thing. Uh, Carrigan, he had such a perfect flank with top in the previous round. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have a, a rifle. He just had MP9. So he had to kind of get close. And by that time, that window of opportunity had closed. In the meantime, two quick trades taking place towards mid. The op singing out loud. Man, you got another tag on Chris J through the door just randomly. Random spot. Get wrecked. Down to 10 HP. He's struggling. Carrigan also tagged down the nine. So mouse ports again, early doors taking all the damage. It could be a lineup for Letney if the author of Chris J decides to peek it and he thinks better of that decision. They're still in this round, but hanging by a thread, but still thereabouts. Watch Carrigan. Yeah, it does get the one from Carr. Easily traded back out again. This is where the utility advantage for Crazy should start to shine. There's only a HE in the hands of Rops. A scout and an AWP to try and retake with is incredibly rough as well. And I'm fairly confident that Letney just heard that player hopping up short, which is going to be Rops, and somehow he's still alive. 
That was a bomb drop, by the way, towards Cat. I don't think Rob saw that. He ran up short, he didn't see the bomb dropped, and now that's gonna allow Letty to pick it up and go all the way towards A. That's just so unfortunate for uh, for Rob's. It sure is. In terms of a, a bomb being planted and conceding that from Mouse Force perspective, there's no real hope of them clutching this. They have no kits. Sure, Rops has an AK, and he has just picked up a kit, mind you. But the lack of armor behind it, and also Chris J, going to be a real issue, especially with his 10 HP. Positions from Crazy are just looking locked in, looking far too strong for Crazy to lose this round. Maybe they can do some damage. I'm very surprised that they're even going for this. Chris J has landed the shot, but it was Rops, remember, that had the kit, and he died towards the top of the site, so there's no hope for Chris J. He's going to pull out of there and save his AWP. Meanwhile, Otto also holds on to his, so Crazy bounce right back. This well, sports have switched one thing up, though. They have Otto to keep three plays towards A and Frozen as well, playing towards CD spawn. And trusting the B bomb site solely in the hands of Mr. Robin Cool. As the first casualty will go the way of Crazy. They have lost Letney early on. They're going to continue to push, though. This could be a slaughter, Vince. Oh, it certainly could. They need to get these nades out desperately. They know that Voxic is going to be positioned on the site somewhere, whether it's long, whether it's car, behind site. Now they're going to find out there's a slight gap in the smoke, but they haven't finished it off. That had to be a kill. The AWP with 15 HP is still just as deadly. The Voxic can position aggressively now. 25 seconds left. Crazy have got to push the go button. They've got to shift through the gears. There's a molly frag onto Voxic. Flashbang plus the molly's going to end him. There is counter flashes being deployed though. Carrigan's gonna chip in with an M4A1S kill. Looking for more. 12 seconds. They've got to get the bomb planted right now. And it's just been dropped by the hands of Carrigan. Meanwhile, Frozen's gonna take the opportunity to move up through mid, round the back of the tees. And although Esperanto does finally get that bomb planted, Frozen clips his head off his shoulders. And Mouse sports back into winning ways. Yeah, that looked a little scary for Mouse. Uh, the moment Voxic got burnt alive. I'm a little surprised he wasn't expecting that peak. I, uh, that was crazy smoke from that mistake. At least semi-competent with the AWP. There's no complete trash AWPers. Crazy in the meanwhile, though, do get the first kill. It's going to be a breath of fresh air as far as they're concerned. But Voxic evens the odds, tips the scales back to equality with his AWP once more. Now Sports trying to switch things up a little bit, sending Carrigan all by his lonesome towards long and keeping three towards mid and B. Unfortunately, not panning out for him and walks is going to peek on out, but he gets tagged out. He's going to re-peek. No, he really shouldn't go for this. He's been tagged to 20 HP, so he's got to play this a little safe. He's, he's very wary the fact someone might come up short. There's no one to short. Instead, three players pushing up long and the floater towards mid that's next. That has been found by Rops. So all three players from Crazy making the way long. The smoke has been deployed, but they have four players to find. Walks is playing behind Gandalf. Got a good position, although being tied to 20 HP means one bullet and he's going to be done for it. Val's been spotted out, a pre-fire comes in from Hunter. He gets to kill us. Hunter finds another one into Chris J. And the tables have all of a sudden turned. It's now a 3v2 in favor of Crazy. Hunts and potentially gathers the round with those two kills. It's down to Rops and Frozen. They're both stuck together. What a crisp headshot that is though from Rops, who spins around. Let me misses his chance. Rops has been damaged, but now it's down to Otto. The finished sniper. Can he dig Crazy out of this deep ditch? It should be his. He's missed his shot. He's going to go down as a result. What a retake from Rops in particular. Four kills to his name. And Mouse Sports take a fifth. We're killing Voxic. He's down to zero dollars. He doesn't have enough full nades. Carrigan, though, going to try and take the initiative. That's a lot of damage. The grenade could finish him off, but indeed it does. A touchdown on Teletti. What a shot by Chris J. Piercing the doors and Nexus head. So just after Crazy finally get another bite. It's gone horribly wrong in the first 10 seconds of combat. They have found themselves well and truly up against it. Yeah, but that's really going to help uh, help the house ports here. They need at least one round in this final few rounds of this first half where they win it without losing anyone. And this, this round will be really helpful. Just in case they lose it, they won't get reset. Rops, a little bit of a preemptive bullet there. I think he spotted a shoulder. Right? What a pure on out. That is unnecessary. I thought. I think he thought someone got blinded with that flashbang from his teammate towards B. That's Rops. But that's going to open up mid. Unfortunately for Crazy, they still have only three players left alive. And there's no one towards tunnels. But Esperanto doesn't care. He's going to push on in. Now he doesn't know where the other player is. Oh no, Rops. I think the scroll button just got pressed. And he jumps in air when he had to take the fight. And that is... Oh, you hate to see that. You hate to oh. see that. Especially Blair, as I feel like that heavily goes off the back of Frozen's unnecessary peak. 
Like, sure, even if he thinks someone's flashbanging mid, I get that. But you're 5-3 in the lead in terms of manpower. You don't have to make risky plays. You don't have to gamble. The round is going to go your way if you just play it smart and steady. That is a, a very odd play indeed, and it's cost them dearly. Take nothing away from Esperanto. Three beautiful entry frags. Played it perfectly, but that does feel like it was a little bit gift-wrapped from Ousman, though the chances are highly unlikely, and that's what gave the vice that particular 1v3. And it goes to say, when you have the advantage, just try to minimize whatever chances your opponents have of getting a kill or winning the round, and that's what Frozen did. He really didn't have to go for that peak. Yeah, especially at that time, because I think there was also like a minute left on the clock. So it wasn't if, as if you were quickly trying to rotate towards the B site because it was about to get hit hard. So, but either way, that's in the past. They're going to have to dust that away. Voxic with the one kill. But that's all it seems like the CT is going to get. But actually, hold the phone. Frozen with the Org. He has other ideas. He's going to try and keep Mouse Sports in this round. Two quick fire kills. HP favoring crazy. Plus, it's going to be a post plant momentarily. And there's the peak. That could seal the deal. Crazy. Eyeing up as teams of the world. I don't think so. Um, I agree. Maybe it's time to, to try and delve into some youth and, and build them up. But that being said, in the second half, it is going to start Crazy's way. The second pistol will be such a massive boost to their economy, to their round score. Voxic, though, going to try and capitalize onto a blind Nexa. And that does open up some long control now for the T's. Otto was thinking about peeking, but he's going to wait for the rest of his team to arrive. They're going to take the elevator up onto a site. And relocate. They're not sure about short, though. No one's actually over on this side. So it is going to spread them out a little bit thinly. And now Mouse Sports look to try and pull the trigger. Bit of Esperanto. Was quite damn good early in the first. Spots to play towards Car, but he's going to get mowed down. Carrigan, in, in, in fact, leading the charge. And one by one, they fall. Walks and joins the party as well. Now, Hunter waiting near elevator. Trying to spot ahead here. But Mouse are giving absolutely nothing for him to find. Letty's making some CD spawn as well. This is going to be a very hard retake, especially if you look at where Frozen's position is. Hunter finds one. Frozen spots out Hunter, and he does get dinged down through the car to pretty low, but he's just moving around, ensuring that he doesn't really... Oh, there we go. Peeks out. Beautiful little tap onto Letney and the team. Uh, and then you have Carrigan, of course. It's, it's, it's a perfect combination as a perfect nade comes out from Crazy. And they're going to be going for the short play, and it's a perfect flashbang. Esperanto finds two, it's all frozen. He's got the help to work with, but he won't be able to transfer the spray right. And a perfect play from Crazy towards short, and shows they find three kills and have the bomb at their feet. Yeah, that's just so sick. That's the kind of play that you have to make when you're on low investment, or at least low firepower. Get that flash in, take the initiative, try and press the aggression over onto the T's. Perfect flash after the nade, soften them up. And now Rops and Chris J with the arduous task of clutching a 2v4. And Chris J actually only has a P250, so he wants to get his hands on this glill. Elsewhere, though, Rops going to go down the P250. Rips through Hunter. It's a great cost to his HP. He needed to get that kill cleanly if he was going to clutch this round. And crazy to put all of your investment in right now. You do have time. You can bite it and see if you can maybe even win this round. And then you've got a nice juicy bonus ahead of you. Nice grenade, chipping away a few players, but also stalling them, lowering them to that Molotov being planted down. The flashbang is solid, and so is the spray from Hunter. Going to yield the two kills, but the bomb site has been lost. And Mouse Sports, at the very least, will get a bomb plant. And Carrigan comes out swinging with a kill on top of it. There is a flank from Otto, but he's at range with the MP9. And Carrigan's SG rips through his head. Esperanto can do little but just watch as the rest of his team die all around him. That almost felt like uh, a pure anti strat for Mouse Sports. They had all four players gather up towards mid. Uh, Carrigan is going to go for a fast, aggressive hit. They have the opportunity to do so. Molotov is going to force Chris J out, and he gets squeezed into an AWP frag from Otto once again. Crazy, get the first kill. Crazy, get the first kill. And that's going to force the rest of the team towards that mid area where Carrigan has taken up a pretty aggressive angle. The thing is, the three guys waiting for them towards B are crazy, adapting to this play from Mouse with the two be slaughtered. Esperanto finds one, finds a second kill. Still got 11 bullets remaining, so he's going to have no peeking out. He's going to peek out. Five spots frozen. Won't win that duel, but there's still two more players in that B bomb site. It's Letney and Hunter, and they know where to find the players. It's all on Young Frozen and Nexa taken from behind. And a very heavy initial 
push towards long as they will fall on back to a more traditional setup and it's going to be auto once more being faced off by Karakrim goes for the slow peak and unfortunately, Woxic not able to trade in time because look at the number of utility being tossed in by Crazy. That's a great work from them. Woxic already down to 31 HP without rattling off a single shot. And Otto still holding the position towards short. Man, Crazy have such a good read of mouse ports. That's not the first time that we've seen one grenade just chunk multiple players on short. It hit them all in the face. It did about 100 to 150 damage just by the nade on its own. And then the AWP frag behind it was pretty much a formality as they were slowed down. So crazy are in the heads of Carrigan and Mouse Sports, and they're refusing to go anywhere. This is a round that we thought Voxic may have some impact on, but so far it's been very one-sided. Hunter gonna find Frozen just on the perimeter of Catwalk, on the periphery of the smoke. And there's two quick kills, and pretty cleanly, they've only lost two HP on Otto. That's it. The problem is on the B bomb side, it's Letney, and he just has the AW all alone. Walking misses a shot, but Letney will not miss his. Finds Chris J. The flashbang is going to be a very obvious kill. There's one player towards the B bomb side, and unfortunately for Rops, he's on a 1v5, Vince, and the bomb is dropped at mid. So this is pretty much a no win round. Yeah, this is 100% going the way of crazy. Like, I don't even want to give Rops 0.1. That's no knock on him. It's just everything stacked against him. He's got 10 seconds to go, it's over. He's going to try and save the AK, see if he can do some damage on his inevitable way out. There's one onto Hunter. Do they even want to chase this too much? I mean, it's an AK. You know the economy. Chris J is going to make his way out long. A multitude of flashes is popping off, but he will find his way towards Pit. That's going to be long control being taken by Mouse Sports. This could be the curtain coming down on Mouse Sports on Dust 2, headed to Overpass. Momentarily, Esperanto taking point, finds Carrigan, drills into his head. Surgical precision with the AK. And now the rest of Mouse Sports are all clumped up on long. It's going to be a one-dimensional hit. They do only have the one smoke and Molotov. They can't even fully cordon off the cross, which is going to put Hunter, if he turns around, of course, as soon as the call comes through, that's going to be the case in a good position. On the back of the site, rocks with two. But it's going to be more kills going the way of the tease. Is Rops really going to pull this off? He's put off a 4k. Where the hell did that come from? Letney in the meanwhile with his AWP. Going to be making a move up through short side. Molotov to greet him. Both players so very low. One bullet from this deagle will finish either of them off. Is he going to be allowed the opportunity though? Letney caught out in the open. And again, it's Rops that's the hero. Somewhere in their pants. At least for mouse sports, they do have the weaponry to work with this time around, though. And uh, Hunter is going to get the first kill once more. Trade will, however, come in. And it's going to be 4v4. And now, if they quicken up the pace, this could work out for mouse sports. Let these once more all alone towards the B bomb side. If they push him to split real quickly, they could catch him off guard. And there we go. Caught with his back turned. A trade does come in from Esperanto. But that's a B bomb side taken over by mouse sports. By mouse sports. And Crazy should potentially just go for the save here. Oh, they're actually going to go or for not. it. They're going in. They're going all in. Karakun's going to go peek and he gets knocked down by Otto's AWP. Unnecessary peek. Maybe feeling the pressure. Chris J, one on three for all the chips on Dust 2. He's already been tagged. He's been fragged by Esperanto. And that's going to be game crazy on Dust 2 in this best of three. So first blood goes their way in the upper bracket finals. One step.